Good morning. Welcome to A Moment of Truth. I'm Stoney Kaiser, pastor of the Church of God of the Union Assembly here in Dalton, Georgia. I hope you are having a blessed day in the Lord. I hope that, that you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. If you don't, let me introduce him to you, him to you, this man called Jesus. He said it like this. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. That's what Christ is all about. That's what life is all about. We, uh, we live our life, our daily life, as though, and it's an unending thing sometimes. People believe that uh, they just can, can do anything they want and, and not have any consequences from it. But we need to examine ourselves, examine ourselves, see whether we be in the faith or not. Realize today is a day of salvation. This world is so full of trouble. There's so much heartache, so much sorrow. Uh, a lot of things that we, we read from the Bible that, that tells us that this day was coming and, and we believe it is here. We believe the day is here that we really, really, really need to get our heart and our life tuned up with Jesus Christ and accept him. Uh, I think about the life that Jesus lived while he was here. And, you know, the Bible speaks in one place about how that he even among his in his own hometown, people didn't believe in him, and and he didn't do very many miracles there because of their unbelief. But your belief today is is all you have. That's what you need to stand on. We don't have Jesus Christ here in the flesh going around and, and healing people that are sick uh, in in front of us to to show us these mighty miracles. It is all done by faith, and that's kind of what I want to get into today. Um, as the things that we that we do, we we do because we believe. We we know that Jesus Christ came here and died. Most everybody will tell you that Jesus Christ came to the earth, that he was born in in uh, Bethlehem of Judea, and that that he came and died and was crucified. and And a lot of people will even admit that he resurrected. Uh, but there's a there's a lot more to the fact that Jesus Christ resurrected than just the fact that he that he got up from the grave. There was a lot that went on there. Uh, that resurrection is because that Jesus Christ resurrected. That gives us a hope of a resurrection. So if we're if we're living our life today just because we have a job, just because we have children, we have a family. If all of our life is surrounded around that and not necessarily what the end is going to be for us, then we're missing the boat. We, need to, uh, we, we don't need to live our life as, as, uh, as a drabby thing, worried about dying, but we do need to live our life considering what the end of our life is, considering what is going to happen to us once it's all said and done. This, this natural life that we live Job said it like this, man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. We see that everywhere. Everybody under the, the sound of my voice out there this morning is, is living in some kind of trouble. But there's, there's victory through Jesus Christ. And our natural life that we live, that's not what, it, that's not what a resurrection is all about. It's not about this natural life. It's about a spiritual life with Jesus Christ. So I want to I want to take up our text. We're going to be speaking about this being the uh, the month that we celebrate Easter and 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 the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're I want to talk a little bit about what a resurrection actually is and why it's important to us. Why the first resurrection that has taken place already. Uh, how that is important to us, and, and I'll, be, I'll be teaching on this for a couple of weeks, so I, I hope you'll enjoy it. But I'm going to start out in, in the book of uh, St. John, and this is in the 11th chapter. We'll, we'll read the first verse to kind of get, uh, get you started as to what this is all about. It says, Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and his sister Martha. It was that, that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Now, let me catch you up on what this story is all about. Lazarus was, was a friend to Jesus, and, and he, Jesus loved Lazarus. And Lazarus had gotten sick, 
and uh, was, was about to die, and, and he did eventually die. And the word had came to Jesus that, that Lazarus had, had died, and he told his disciples, said, he is asleep. His disciples told him, said, well, if he is asleep, he does better. Why, why do you want to go and trouble him? But Jesus said, I must go that my father will be glorified. You see, in, in your life today, I know I'm sure that there is things that are going on, maybe sickness, uh, uh, there is maybe financial issues that you may be having. A lot of these things come into our life to give God glory, that God can get glory out of the things that we do. For example, the man that was born blind, they asked Jesus Christ, said, uh, Jesus came to, to heal the man, and they asked the Lord, said, uh, who did wrong, this man's mother or his, his father? Jesus said, neither, but that my father would be glorified. See, sometimes... There's things that go on in our life that gives God glory when we're delivered from those. So that's, that's what life really is all about. Life that, the life that we live here now, it's just a short time. James talked about it. He said life is just a vapor that appears for a little time and then, then it vanishes away. Well, this life that we live in today, it's, it's going to dissipate. It's going to leave. Uh, we're, we can't live forever in this state. God never intended for man to live forever in the state that we are in right now. God's intentions was for us to have an eternal life of glory, a, a life like God has now, one that doesn't fade away. This life that we are in today, it fades away. Well, Lazarus here, he had, uh, he had died, and Jesus was going to go to, uh, to glorify the Father and and. The Martha, of course, she came to Jesus, and, and this is the, uh, we'll start at the 20th verse. This is John 11 and 20. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. Now, they had a lot of faith in Jesus Christ. They believed that he could, uh, that he could heal. They believed that he could cause him to, to not die. Not only that, they believed that if he asked the Father to, to bring him back, that he would do that. So they had a lot of faith in Jesus, but they didn't have a, the understanding that he was fixing to give them and what this was all about and, and why even Lazarus had to die to start with. Let's read that 21st verse. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. What an awesome thought to know that the man that, that they had so much faith in would say, Thy brother shall rise again. So that had to be encouraging to them. But there's something I want to bring to your attention in this next verse that that. Mary, or Martha, said unto the Lord, and this is a 24th verse, it said, Martha said, saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Now, the question I have to you is if Martha knew that there was going to be a resurrection, um, somebody had to have been telling him that, telling her that. Somebody had to have been preaching that there was going to be a resurrection. Uh, or she wouldn't have even known that. So notice how it said that. It said, Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. So somebody evidently had been telling that there was going to be a resurrection. Well, we know that Jesus Christ had talked about the resurrection, even uh, even in his, in his teaching when he had talked to the disciples and, and all the different people that would follow him there. He had talked about the resurrection and how that all that God had given him, he would, he would raise it up at the last day. But there was some understanding that Martha needed to know about this day and this time that Jesus was fixing to show her. This is in the 25th verse. It said, Jesus saith unto her, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus was showing her that the resurrection is all about Jesus Christ. If you intend on uh, being in the last resurrection, you're going to be there one way or the other, whether it's e either unto life or unto death. 
But if you intend on having everlasting life, you need to understand what the resurrection is. You need to understand that it comes through Jesus Christ. The resurrection comes through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? And she said, I do. She told him, said, yes, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. So she believed in Jesus Christ. She had faith in him. And she knew that he, whatever he'd done, that if he asked of the Father, that God would do it. Well, it goes on to show us that, you know, she, she was distraught about her brother passing. And, of course, even Jesus, the Bible said, the shortest verse in the Bible, uh, if you want to read it, it's the 35th verse of this same chapter. It said, Jesus wept. Um, when, when Lazarus had died, the Lord had told him, said, he only sleepeth. They, and they, they was telling Lord, he's, he's dead. He's been in there four days, and, and he, he's, by now he stinketh. And uh, the Lord told him, said, take me to where he is at. And, and when he got there, he seen the compassion that they all had for Lazarus and, and how that they were, were mourning in their heart. And the Bible said, Jesus wept. So Jesus has a heart to, to, uh, for comfort for people. But Jesus went on to tell him, said, where is he? And when he got there, the Bible said that Jesus told him, said, arise, Lazarus, arise. Jesus Christ, when he spoke that day for, Je for uh, Lazarus to come out of the tomb, I believe that if he had not called him by his name, everybody in the ground would have, would have come out of the grave. I want to read that there. This is the 38th verse. It said, Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister, said, unto him, a sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, and he hath been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. And that's why this all happened, that God would, God would be given glory through the things that he done. Then they took away the stone. From the place where the dead, dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus came up out of the grave, bound in his clothes, but Jesus told him, said, loose him, and set him free. That's what the Lord can do for you today. He can loose you. He can set you free. He can give you everlasting joy. Uh, come back and listen. I'm going to get more into what a resurrection is next week. I hope that you'll enjoy this. Come down and visit us. We're at 2211 South Dixie Highway here in Dalton, Georgia, the Church of God of the Union Assembly. May God bless you as my prayers.